chasing the police every single day. The law states that he was given a lawful order not to film the officer, and he will be committing the crime of disorderly conduct if he disobeys it. Under Section 76-9-102 of the Utah Code, quote, An individual is guilty of disorderly conduct if the individual refuses to comply with the lawful order of a law enforcement officer to move from a public place or an official meeting, or knowingly creates a hazardous or physically offensive condition by any act that serves no legitimate purpose, or intending to cause public inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm, or recklessly creating a risk of public inconvenience, annoyance, or alarm, the person engages in fighting or in violent, tumultuous, or threatening behavior, makes unreasonable noises in a public place or an official meeting, makes unreasonable noises in a private place, which can be heard in a public place or an official meeting, or obstructs vehicular or pedestrian traffic in a public place or an official meeting. While the statute does prohibit disobeying a lawful order to move from a public place or official meeting, it does not allow for a disorderly conduct conviction for refusing any other lawful order, including an order to stop filming. Further, even if the disorderly conduct statute did make it illegal to disobey such an order, a court would likely conclude that the order to stop filming a police officer in public was not lawful. In the 2022 case of Irizarry v. Yahia, the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over Utah, officially recognized the, quote, First Amendment right to film the police performing their duties in public, and held that this right was clearly established law as of 2019. In reaching the conclusion, the court looked to, quote, three well-established First Amendment principles that show that filming the police performing their duties in public is protected activity. First, the court noted that, quote, a major purpose of the First Amendment was to protect the free discussion discussion of governmental affairs. Filming the police and other public officials as they perform their official duties acts as a watchdog of government activity, and furthers debate on matters of public concern. Additionally, the court reasoned that, quote, without some protection for seeking out the news, freedom of the press could be eviscerated, that there is, quote, an undoubted right to gather news from any source by means within the law, and that video recording is, quote, unambiguously speech creation, not mere conduct. Given the incontrovertible legal precedent, a court would almost certainly determine that Mr. Vollmer was exercising his First Amendment rights by recording the volunteer officer, and the officer's orders that he stop were a clear violation of those rights. So each time, Deputy Wolsey tells them not to speak with him because he is trying to, quote, shut down Smithfield. While police officers do have First Amendment rights as citizens of the United States, as government employees, they can face consequences for their speech in ways that private citizens cannot, particularly for speech they make while on duty and in uniform. As the Supreme Court described in the 1983 case of Connick versus Myers, decisions as to when a government employer can take corrective or disciplinary action against an employee for their speech must, quote, seek a balance between the interests of the employee as a citizen in commenting upon matters of public concern and the interest of the state, as an employer, in promoting the efficiency of the public services it performs through its employees. Similarly, the court noted in the 1994 case of Waters v. Churchill that for speech by a government employee to be protected by the First Amendment, it, quote, must be on a matter of public concern, and the employee's interest in expressing herself on this matter must not be outweighed by any injury the speech could cause to the interest of the state as an employer in promoting the efficiency of the public services it performs through its employees. Here, while Deputy Woolsey's speech was undoubtedly on a matter of public concern, a court would most likely to determined that his interest in expressing his opinion at the time, and in the way that he did, was outweighed by the potential injury to the state's interests, as his actions likely constituted so-called First Amendment retaliation against Mr. Vollmer for his protected speech. In general, the First Amendment prohibits the government from retaliating against an individual for exercising protected expression. As the Tenth Circuit noted in the 2000 case of Worrell v. Henry, quote, any form of official retaliation for exercising one's freedom of speech, including prosecution, threatened prosecution, bad faith investigation, and legal harassment, constitutes an infringement infringement of that freedom. The decision also explained that to succeed in a First Amendment retaliation claim, the plaintiff must prove that they were engaged in constitutionally protected activity, that the government's action caused them, quote, to suffer an injury that would chill a person of ordinary firmness from continuing to engage in that activity, and that the government's action was, quote, substantially motivated as a response to the plaintiff's exercise of constitutionally protected conduct. In this situation, Mr. Vollmer was unquestionably engaged in speech that was protected by the First Amendment, and Deputy Woolsey essentially admitted that he was taking this action because he did not like Mr. Vollmer's past and current speech. As to whether Mr. Vollmer suffered an injury because of Deputy Woolsey's conduct, the Tenth Circuit determined in the Irizarry case we discussed earlier in this episode that because, quote, physical and verbal intimidation are cognizable injuries, a YouTube journalist suffered an injury when an officer stood in front of his camera and shined a flashlight into it. Now, quoting, making it difficult, if not impossible, to continue recording a potentially critical moment of the police activity. The court also noted that, quote, this injury alone would chill a person of ordinary firmness from continuing to film the traffic stop. Because the Tenth Circuit has recognized that interfering with an individual's exercise of protected speech can constitute a sufficient injury for a First Amendment retaliation claim, a court would likely conclude that Mr. Vollmer had a claim against Deputy Woolsey for his attempts to dissuade individuals from talking to him.
informs Mr. Vollmer that they are taking these actions out of consideration for his safety and are trying to protect him from the many local citizens they claim are angry with him. However, courts have long recognized that police officers generally cannot censor an individual's controversial speech, even for their own protection. This issue, known as the problem of the heckler's veto, has been addressed in numerous Supreme Court decisions. And although speech is not protected by the First Amendment when it creates a clear and present danger of riot, disorder, or other immediate threat to public safety, as the court noted in a footnote in the 1966 case of Brown versus Louisiana, quote, participants in an orderly demonstration in a public place are not chargeable with the danger that their critics might react with disorder or violence. In the 1949 case of Terminiello versus Chicago, the Supreme Court overturned a disorderly conduct conviction against a suspended Catholic priest who, in an address that he delivered in a Chicago auditorium, quote, condemned the conduct of the crowd outside and vigorously, if not viciously, criticized various political and racial groups. Despite the fact that police officers assigned to the meeting to maintain order were not able to prevent several disturbances and, quote, the crowd outside was angry and turbulent, the court determined that he could not be convicted for disorderly conduct simply because his speech caused, quote, a breach of the peace. In reaching this conclusion, the court explained that, quote, a function of free speech under our system of government is to invite dispute. It may indeed best serve its high purpose when it induces a condition of unrest, creates dissatisfaction with conditions as they are, or even stirs people to anger. The court expressed a similar sentiment in the 2011 case of Snyder versus Phelps, where it held that the infamous Westboro Baptist Church could not be sued for protesting soldiers' funerals, noting that although speech can inflict great pain, quote, we cannot react to that pain by punishing the speaker. As a nation, we have chosen a different course, to protect even hurtful speech on public issues to ensure that we do not stifle public debate. Here, it is clear that most of the citizens of Beaver did not seem to even notice Mr. Vollmer's presence at the celebration, and there was absolutely no evidence that his speech was on the brink of causing any sort of violence or disorder. A court reviewing this situation would therefore almost certainly conclude that the deputies could not censor Mr. Vollmer's speech based on the justification of preventing a breach of the peace. When you come in on a prevent the sheriff's office from prohibiting speech on public sidewalks or parks, threatening citation or arrest, or citing or arresting the activists for engaging in public outreach, handing out literature, and soliciting signatures. As of the day... Go to this is free speech. <laughs> Go to Nazi Germany! Go to Nazi Germany! 
Just damage my hearing. I've been watching you. You're out here causing this problem. This is legally protesting. You should be ashamed of yourself for being un American. Come on. Where's your car at, Andrew? Dude, at? I am leaving. Don't fucking touch my where's son. Where's your car at? Dude. Go to your car. Go to your this, car. I am legally protesting. You don't pro you don't want that in front of little kids. I am legally Let's protesting. Go. Let's go. Dude, I want, you're violating my civil I don't rights. Care. Take it over the court. Did you hear him say I don't this? Care. Go ahead. Did Go you ahead. hear? Dude, Go. get the fuck out of my Go. space, man. Where's your car? Get the fuck get out of my the, space. Get away from the kids. I, I can fucking leave. Let's, Let's go. Dude, 
Let's go. Dude. Go to your car. Wherever your car is. Hey, Andrew, go to your car. can you get the supervisor? Go to your car. Get Come the on. supervisor. He's car. touching my shit. Go to your car. Go to He's your touching car. my shit. I'm not going to harass these kids. Hey, this is not car. harassing. This You're is harassing this these is, kids. You're this stopping is, traffic. I am You're not stopping traffic. traffic. Get out of here. Bullshit. Go. Go. I am go leaving go protesting. Get protest away from the school. I can put. Who Let's fucking go. touching my shit? Let's yeah. go. I got a shoe. Go. I got a shoe. Get your shoes. Get your shoes. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's and go. you're uh, telling me to leave why? I'm telling you because you're calling a disturbance. I am right not. Here. You're stopping traffic. You, I did not. I'm not here for no reason. You I did not. I did not. Watch the pole. Watch the pole, Andrew. I did not. Andrew, call Andrew don't call me cop. It's Detective Delgado. You got it on your camera. Let's go. Come on. Quit Let's fucking touching me. Get away from here. Fuck you. I don't care. Whatever you think that that's going to hurt me. Watch the polls. Let's go. Let's go. You're not going to be over here terrorizing these kids. Terrorizing? You're ter Come on. Let's go. I am fucking waiting Let's for go. people, ass Let's fuck. Go. You're not going to terrorize these kids. You protest all you want over here, but you're not going to be in front of that school. Seriously? You heard me? You got me on camera? What, you think I'm worried about that dog on camera? Wow. You really think I don't care about that camera? Let's go. Go to your car. Wow. Wow, nothing. Don't go back to that school. I'm trying to cross the street and you are fucking assaulting me, Whatever. ass. Whatever. Hold on. Let this idiot crawl. Wow, you're the one that's a fucking Nazi. You don't even know what it is to serve. Oh, for the founding fathers, you stupid. Fuck oh. you. You're out of here. Get out. Fuck you!